Good morning, everyone. Now, see, you're doing the same thing. I only heard a few people singing. I mentioned that at 8 o'clock. Let's try it again and use your singing voice. Good morning, everyone. Woo-hoo, you sound beautiful. Well, I know folks are still coming in. Those of you that are inside here, if you open your bulletin, um, uh, Brother Justin's going to kind of give us some of our opening announcements that are necessarily not here or changes that have been made. So listen, and then we'll uh, begin our worship service. Justin? I'd like to welcome everybody. It's a good day to be in the Lord's house. Good day to be with their brothers and sisters, and just a good day, because every day is a good day, because it's a day that the Lord has made. I'd like to welcome anybody who is visiting for the first time. Uh, we have a uh, our welcome center out there after the service if you'd like to go over to your right hand side out there and we have our welcome center and we would like to get your information not to haggle you but just to get to know you we just want to get to know everybody a little better if you are not a visitor it's still great to have everybody here again and if you're with us online it's great to have you and we miss you and hope to see you again in person in the future Uh, the announcements this day are starting with uh, Tuesday the uh, trustees board meeting uh, that trustees meeting has been canceled uh, that's for July the 5th this Tuesday then the uh, the dinner Bible study that was going to be July the 7th uh, brother bud has a, a something that's come up and will not be able to be there so we're going to go ahead and postpone that so but the sign up is still out and we have postponed that and it will then be July the 14th so that is all that I have I believe We want to begin our service as well with celebrations, and um, I understand that uh, Walt and Sue Harrela tomorrow, where is Walt and Sue at? Wave your hands. There they are over here. 56 years of marriage. Woo! (laughs) Yes, Walt was telling us about, uh, it's interesting getting married on Independence Day. I'll leave that up to y'all to work that out there, so... I understand, Bill and Barbara, is it your anniversary as well? Well, somebody put down here they thought it was your anniversary. Well, happy anniversary whenever yours is. (laughs) We also mentioned back when we came back from COVID now that if somebody actually had a birthday right at the weekend that we wanted to honor them. June Austin, we understand it is your 92nd birthday. Wow. Wow. Where's June? Wave your hand, June. There she is. There she is. And Matt's going to play Happy Birthday. If y'all will sing along, Justin, help me out if you will. Matt? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Somebody else may be having a birthday as well. We, we just wish you a happy birthday. I got to mention to you, you know, June is a, amazing uh, what she has done for us. I, uh, we have a new baby in our community. I'll be taking them. I still have one of the uh, uh, crocheted work that she's done uh, to give to me, to give to new babies born in our church. Little Oliver was just born at Shands, and I'll be taking it to him. So I thank you for that. And let me just say that I, a bird flew by June a few minutes ago and told me that we actually have a celebration for you right after the service that you were not aware of. And uh, it's a surprise party to honor you and the church community. You're welcome to go next door to the fellowship hall afterwards. And, uh, and if June, you don't like that, don't argue with me, argue with your son, okay? Just... Uh, <laughs> We just appreciate and love you so, so very much. We're going to light our candles now to begin our uh, time of worship. Brother Matthew has uh, put together a beautiful prelude and postlude for us today in honor of July the 4th, if you will. The altar is open.
Can we all say amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matthew, so much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our July the 4th weekend. Father, we thank you for freedom. We thank you for all that you have done for us in our own heart. You have given us freedom in the Spirit by Jesus Christ. Guide us in this, your worship service, in Jesus' name. And may all of God's children say, Our choir will give us our call to worship, and then we will have the congregation stand for our opening hymn of praise. stand and join us in singing. And hallelujah. Now, if you remain standing, <laughs> I just got you up. And if we'll sing our hymn of praise, and we'll sing page 696, America the Beautiful, and we'll do all three verses.
Brother Justin will lead us in our uh, creed today. I love the last words of that great song. God, mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. We love our country. We love our nation. But we are also making it clear in our uh, singing that it is not perfect. It has flaws as the human race. But we love our nation, and we hope every Every person around the globe loves their nation. We're proud to be Americans. Brother Justin? The Apostles' Creed can be found on number 881 and also on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, the Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. You may be seated, and we would encourage you to turn uh, the other side of your bulletin to our prayer concerns. We're not going to be lifting up the ones that are already in the bulletin. We want to encourage you to go to our web page. The bulletin is always posted there. And if you're not part of our prayer chain, we have 300 uh, emails that we send out uh, constantly with a prayer chain, and the prayer requests that come in on Sunday go on there uh, as well. So what we do want to lift up is those that have come to us that are not printed here today. And we give a praise report. Last week, those of you that were here, you gave uh, to take care of those children at the Boys and Girls Club to feed them on the weekends, our Change for Change, and it was $199. Can you give the Lord a clap offering? It's wonderful for our congregation. Uh, we praise the Lord also for our sister church uh, held their uh, groundbreaking last night. Justin represented us and his family uh, there uh, with them and uh, congratulate them. They're moving the sanctuary when it is built. It'll be right next door to us. And the old sanctuary will be used for their school. So we're very excited to have our sister church here right before us. Uh, Bonnie Russell is not in your bulletin, was taken back to the hospital. Her hemoglobin count just fell, almost bottomed out. So it was very dangerous, but she's back home doing much better. But she cannot preach at the 8 o'clock service next Sunday morning, and she was going to do that for us. And so since we have a new assistant minister, I called Justin on the phone. I love this. And I said, Justin, how about preaching next Sunday? So he said he would be more than glad to do that for us at 8 o'clock uh, next Sunday morning. Also, a little child from the uh, preschool, little Bentley, uh, had a brain shunt put in on Friday at Shans. That's not in our prayer concern. So if you can keep them, they're still up there uh, in your prayers. And then all those that we've been praying for, for cancer and other areas, they're all doing better. They are, praise the Lord. Uh, but so many recently, again, with cancer. So I'm pulling together a prayer meeting this Wednesday at 4 o'clock in the hall uh, for cancer survivors. So if anybody here, if you're a cancer survivor, if you have a few minutes, please come join us. I'm going to serve communion. I'll get with Miss Susie to set that up. And we want to see how we can support each other. And we mainly want to pray for Paul down in Miami in his recovery. Uh, Mike uh, Atherton is going to help take lead of that from uh, uh, our program. So you, it's welcome to everyone. And we would just love to have you there. So if you'll hold these in your hands and, and like me, if you'll look at them as Justin is leading us in prayer, I know the Lord will bless us. Justin?
just a reminder that the altar is always open. If you have any need, this is no better place to bring it, but you can bring it where you're sitting because our Heavenly Father, thankfully, he meets us where we are. Will you bow your heads as we pray? Gracious, loving, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the simplicity of prayer. Just being able to open up and say, Dear Father, this is what I've got going on. Looks like a mess, partly because I've been involved in it and have not turned it over to you. Here it is, Lord, we turn it over to you. We turn over all of these prayer concerns that Pastor Eddie has lifted up. Sometimes the prayer concerns seem like a mountain, but then we remember, Lord, you move mountains. We ask that you move these mountains, this, these prayer requests. Each of us have our own personal mountain. Some of us may be on the mountaintop, but sometimes some of us may be at the bottom of the mountain looking up and seeing that mountain seems unmovable or unreachable to the top. And we ask that you just shine a little light down on us, that we can just see that there's freedom at the top of that mountain, a freedom that we're getting ready to celebrate in this service, but a freedom that we get to celebrate as one nation under God. The 4th of July, what a blessed day that we have that we can say, dear Lord, our nation is a nation of God. Doesn't look like it sometimes, Lord, but men long ago decided to write those words down and we as people try to keep pulling it out sometimes, but Lord, you're there no matter what. You are there before us and you will be there long after these men are gone. I ask that you come before us in this service, that we feel your presence, that you just linger over us, that we know without a shadow of a doubt that you are here with us, that you, that you, as you faithfully have said, that you were there when two or more were gathered, that there's more than two here today, Lord. Help us to feel your presence. Help us to leave this day without a doubt. But let us know as we join together in this beautiful, beautiful fellowship that we call the church. I ask that you come and anoint Brother Eddie this morning, my brother as I've gotten to know him more and more. Sometimes it's harder to call him pastor and a little easier to call him brother every day. May we all feel that that jointness as brothers and sisters in Christ. And may we intercess on him as he is going to lift up what you have laid on his heart, that we may lift it up, that it will do some work in us because we all need work done on us, Lord, every single one of us. Because I know as he's lifting this up, Brother Eddie is, that you're working on him. And I ask this day, dear Lord, that you remember each and every one of those prayer requests that have not been lifted up, and as we have a moment of silence, that you feel it, that we can hear you in your still small voice where you said for us to be still and know that I am God. And now as we sing the Lord's Prayer.
so beautiful, the Lord's Prayer. I ask that you stand at this moment as we read the Holy Word, Scripture for today. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please remain standing. I'm going to ask our ushers if they would go ahead and prepare to bring the offering forward. Uh, Our tradition has been over the years on the first Sunday of the month that if there was monies left for communion uh, to go to the discretionary fund. But I want to mention to you, you can do that or you can um, in your offering today, now or at the close of the service. I want to, the discretionary fund today to go to the Dunellen High School football team uh, in honor of Alex Kozlov, who went on to heaven a few years ago. His birthday would have been celebrated yesterday. He loved the football team, and they're trying to raise funds to go to camp. Uh, We raise funds for the scouts as well as our own youth. And this particular FCA camp uh, has all about Jesus in the morning, all about Jesus in the evening. And I've been to those camps, some of you probably have too, and it really is transforming. And so I'm excited about that, and they need a lot of money, about 9000 but I have a, a challenge of two, so I'm given to that. So if you feel led over this week and next week, I'm just going to encourage you to, you can just put it for discretionary fund, and we'll make sure it gets to them. Amen? Amen. Well, let's remain standing, and let's sing the wonderful praises of our doxology together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these offerings today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Dear friends, as we are blessed by our special music today in honor of July the 4th, what a great celebration of the Lord in our nation. As difficult as our nation is right now and all the things going on, Still, the founding fathers and mothers had a heart for God. Um, They did, and they've looked to the Word of God, even if they weren't necessarily followers all the time of just the Word of God, like all of us. We were founded on those principles, and so we honor that today with our worship and celebration.
Thank you, choir, Miss June and Miss Sandy, very, very much. And I love the pictures, too. Thank you, Andy, and the sound room and the pictures uh, that we can watch, especially the little children there. You that are here regular on 11 o'clock as well, let me mention that uh, my brother Bobby, I see in the back from our safety team, is, uh, does our prayer time always at the um, 9.30 hour. And so Justin and I uh, met this last week, and we talked with Bobby. And so next week, and then uh, on the 24th, I think as well, we're going to have Bobby give you the uh, morning prayer uh, as he does at the 930 service. And we were trying to mingle some of the services together. So thank you, Bobby, for doing that back there. Can we all say amen? amen. Title of the message today is Freedom. Freedom. Clear that God wants to set us free. I probably... Preaching to the choir here, but you, you, and you may all know that uh, 1941 is when it was set to be a national holiday in the United States, the July the 4th, uh, celebrated, and of course that is tomorrow. And there's so many uh, celebrations today, family gatherings, church gatherings, fireworks. Everybody loves fireworks except my puppy dog last night did not like fireworks. So I know if you've got little critters, you understand that very well. So, but it's a celebration and we, we are gathered with our family and friends, but we must always remember that it's founded on uh, the freedoms of our nation. And today in the sermon in preparation for communion, it's Communion Sunday I thought it would be good also to talk about our spiritual freedoms. I remember um, a dear friend, and I've shared with some of you this before, but it fits perfect for this opening. A friend of mine years ago was struggling with pornography. He came to me and was a young man at the time and asked if I could be his accountability partner. He's just trying to work through it and, and stop. And so I did that for a long time with, with this individual, and he eventually moved away, took a teaching position um, and, and far away, and um, didn't see him for a long time. Later on, saw him, just asked him, how are you doing? And he knew what I was asking. And he said, you know, and this is the way he described it, put chills up and down my spine. I thought it was so beautiful the way he described it. He said, do you know how that um, sometimes when the horizon is so dark, like during hurricane season, we all are familiar with that. Not a light, and it sometimes daytime can almost look like nighttime, just so dark. He said, and then eventually there's some kind of split in the horizon and some light shines through. He said, that's me right now. Can you say amen? He was finding relief and healing, dealing with past issues, all of those things as he was working through that. He felt God's healing grace. That's freedom. That's freedom. Doesn't mean things were perfect. Didn't mean things were 100% okay. It meant things were getting better. And that's what I want to talk about today. Things getting better. That God is on the throne and that He loves us and cares for us. And even in the craziness of life, sinfulness of life, that if we submit our lives to Him and He forgives us of our sins, things are getting better. Better. We had the opportunity just a few weeks ago, Justin and I, to baptize five of our young people and, and lead them to Christ or share the sinner's prayer. We mentioned that a couple weeks ago. And then in Vacation Bible School, the older kids, to talk to them again what it means to be set free, set free from sin. Now, you might wonder a young person, how much sin can they commit if they're a young person? But we would try to begin the teaching process that's a lifetime journey of understanding that we are born in sin, that even children understand selfishness and I want this, even though it may hurt you that I have it or I take it from you. The idea that that selfishness and not selflessness needs to be delivered. We need to be transformed. We need to be set free. And that is the good news of the gospel, that we are set free from our sins. Can you say amen? amen. Now, the A of our ABCs today in the passage that Justin read to us is a very interesting passage. It begins with the idea of slavery. If someone continues to sin, they are a slave to sin. And I'm going to use the A as the article adjective there of slavery because I'm talking about slavery. But the modifier there is the word A and that will be the A of our ABCs to help you remember that. A slave to sin if you continue to sin. Now, we know that God does not want us to continue in sin. 
that he has set us free. But many times we seem to be in bondage to the sinfulness of the world that we live in. And sometimes we are complacent and we just accept it. And we just say, well, this is just who I am, Pastor. Well, Christ has created us for something better. Something better. And I know that our nation, with all of its turmoil and all of its struggle, can get better. Amen? It can. And it can through people like you and me, by the grace of God. You know, I'm thinking of my great-grandfather, Randall, in the early 1800s. The family, we check this out historically, very poor, could not take care of the kids. Randall was one of the kids. And so he was sold to the Webb family to be an indentured servant. And when I say sold, like in slavery, in other words, they had to promise him a bed and food. And he learned the trade of farming, um, and then he'd work on the farm. They needed an extra hand on the farm. And that's the way he, he spent those teenage years. They moved uh, from Georgia into Florida, the Panhandle, before the Civil War. And then the war broke out, and then everything changed. Everything changed. Now, friends, if you think about the biblical passage that in Christ that there is no Jew nor Greek, no male nor female, no slave nor free. We're all equal in the sight of God at the foot of the cross. What the Lord seems to be saying in this passage about slavery is that I want to take you from a slave to sin and make you a child of God, make you part of the family of God. That takes us to the B of the ABCs for our communion message today. And that is that a family member belongs always to the family. Always to the family. Now, let's go back to my great-grandpa, Randall. He went with his two, they were not brothers. Again, he was an indentured servant to the family, but they were close in age. The war broke out. He went up, uh, up to North Georgia and ended up all the way up to Missionary Ridge and then fought in the Civil War with the two of them. Both brothers were killed at Missionary Ridge. Uh, when Early on in my life, I went up there to see if I could find their graves. Did not realize they had been exhumed and brought back down to the panhandle to be buried in the Webb Cemetery. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, so I looked all over Missionary Ridge for them, but I did not find them. And began to research that story, and my, my great-grandfather was um, captured and put in a northern prison until the war was over. Now, then something changed. My grandfather, after the war, great-grandfather, moved back to the only family he knew. He didn't have a family anymore in Georgia. The family he knew in the Panhandle, that he was an indentured servant, fell in love with one of the daughters, Susan Webb, and they married. And so the slave or the servant became part of the family. And things changed. He became one of the leaders of the family. And it was permanent. And the God is telling us today that when he gets a hold of your life, it's permanent. It is permanent. It's with you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Think of the prodigal son story. Let me give you some proof. The prodigal just left, squandered the wealth of the family, just almost bankrupted them, repents of his sins, comes back home, saying in his mind, well, even the slaves, the indentured servants get along better than I am now. But when his daddy saw him, he runs to greet him, hugs him, puts a new robe on him, ring on his finger, kills the fatted calf. They have a party. He said, my son that was lost is now found. He was still his son. He was still part of the family. That was the problem of the elder brother. He knew that. Because if you, you bring him back in, because he's part of the family and dad never let him go, you see, part of the inheritance that 
now belongs to the elder son is his. There's a whole lot going on in that story if you study it in depth. And so the elder son struggles with that, you see. He doesn't want to give up what's his, you see. He's already taken what was, what was belonged to him. But daddy sees it differently, and daddy represents our father in heaven, that he sees us as his children. And even if we're prodigal, we're part of the family. I love it. I love it. Let me give you one more example. Mary Magdalene, filled with demons. Now, we don't know if one time Jesus healed her from all those demons and set a number of demons inside of her. We don't know. Or maybe she kept falling off the wagon and he had to go back and get her and heal her again. I, we don't know. It's, it's just very consolidated there. But either way, she had demons inside of her, but she became part of the family and Jesus would not let her go. I love that. He will not let you go. Then. Have you experienced a then in your life when things have changed and you've given your life to God? Does that mean everything's going to be perfect? No, probably not. May even get worse. <laughs> but then things can change. Months ago, I was visiting with Bill and Rita Lammers. Many of you know them well. Every communion, we sing one heart. Rita wrote that for us when we moved into this church years ago, arranged it, composed it, just did everything, and we've been singing it ever since. She put together another song. I fell in love with it. We put the lyrics out on the round table. If you didn't get a chance to pick them up, there's plenty of when you exit today if you'll pick up one of those. But she made about a four-minute video. She put it all together, her and her husband, and at their home, right at Christmas time, about how life is so crazy, but then the Lord comes. So let's watch that on the video before communion today.
we say amen? Amen. amen. Unto the Lord. That was beautiful, Miss Rita. The C of our ABCs is we are God's children. Because of what the Lord did then, now we are God's children. I drop down to verse 39 and 40, if you have your Bible still open, of that passage. And it reminds us that we are Abraham's children. In the Old Testament, the people of God were called Abraham's children. And in the New Testament, we're called the family of God, Jesus' children, of course. We are God's children. And when he has set you free, you are free indeed. Free indeed. We are so blessed to be in the United States of America. I know there are difficulties. We've mentioned that a couple times already this morning. But it is still a great, great nation. And to hopefully to everybody here, the greatest there is. You know, not taken away from other people in their nations. But that's us, you know. When I walk my puppy dog early in the morning... When I come in and, and the whole world seems to still be asleep, I can turn on my ceiling fan. Thank you, Jesus. Get out my little piece of chocolate, a cup of coffee and a banana or, or an apple and sit down and just have a beautiful prayer time, not worrying about somebody shooting me or coming against me or a war in my own backyard because of what our brothers and sisters down through the ages have done here and around the globe. We are blessed, very, very blessed, friends, and we know it. And we can find things to experience the blessings of God. Even the small things can make the biggest difference in the world, show our appreciation to our Heavenly Father for what we have and what we possess. He loves us so much because then... The Bible said hundreds of years before Jesus even came that a virgin shall conceive and bear a child and his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. That is who is here. That is what communion is all about. For the Son of God gave his life on Calvary. He that knew no sin became our sin so that we might become the family of God. In a few moments, you're going to have the privilege of coming forward symbolically to receive your chalice and you're welcome to kneel or to go right back to your pews but the key is just coming forward for those of you that can like you're coming to the altar of God and I want you to have a couple thoughts on your mind as we're asking the Lord to forgive us of our sins what on independence weekend do I need to be free from hmm. could it be doubt kind of doubting God's goodness in the midst of the turmoil, kind of like Thomas doubted until the Lord gave him a tremendous experience. Could it be that we're needing to, to launch out into the unknown and we're a little afraid of that and, and we need to be free from that fear like Peter stepping on the water? Or maybe we're like Mary Magdalene and we still are fighting our demons. And we just feel so unworthy. Maybe we need to be free from that. Whatever your need is when you come, give that to Christ and let him set you free. And when he sets you free, you are free indeed. Father, we thank you so much for your presence, your peace, and your joy. In your name we pray, amen. We're going to do our liturgy to open up the communion portion of our service today first. Brother Justin and I will lead you. It is found on number 13 in your hymn book, or you can follow along on the screen. You may remain seated. When I lift my hand, that's the opportunity for you to join and part of the responsive reading back and forth. And then after that, we will be singing... Of course, the song that we sing every Communion Sunday, written by Miss Rita as well, One Heart. The second verse of that song is the consecration of the communion elements. And during that song is when our ushers and stewards will be getting in place to direct you and guide you to come forward and receive the chalice. So I'm going to ask Brother Justin if you'll begin with us again on number 13, or you can follow along on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of, of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his he heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As we sing One Heart, we're going to ask our ushers and stewards at this time if they will get in place. And then when we finish, I will give you our direction. We met this week trying to design how to bring everybody forward. The choir already has their chalices. Uh, remember again that communion is open to all in the Methodist tradition. Um, you may be a visitor today from another church or another denomination. In our tradition, it's open to you. This uh, is not about membership. This is about you and your relationship with Jesus Christ and Him alone. So we'll ask that you can come forward, receive the sacrament. We always have the gluten-free bread, and then you can kneel or you can return back to your seats, and we'll all take communion together. So I'm going to ask that everyone prepare as we sing One Heart Together. Miss June, inquire if you'll lead us.
May all of God's people say? Amen. We're going to begin uh, with the center aisles, and Brother Matthew will be playing for us where we're going to begin in the, the uh, back and work our way forward. All you need to do is follow your ushers. If you cannot come forward, let them know, and we'll take communion to you in a minute. And then we're going to, after we do the center aisles, do the side aisles. We're going to bring it right to you. So as they're getting ready to come, please be patient with us. We worked on this this week to make it run smoothly. Uh, we'll serve the center aisles first, and then we'll serve the side aisles. The altar is open. from the back forward on both side aisles in just a minute. As soon as the usher directs you and as you come to receive the sacrament, they can make the circle around. They will stand there at the corner there and you can make your circle as well. The altar remains open. We have the gluten-free on the altar rail, so we have that if you'll just ask for that as you come. Again, if you cannot come forward, if you'll let the usher know, and we'll bring the sacrament back to you in just a moment.
Are there any others that have not been served? If you'll just wave your hand, maybe you did not remind the usher, we'll be glad to bring it to you. If you will take the, your cup and uncover the first layer of plastic for the bread, this represents the body of Christ. God has given us so much, so much. Jesus was alive for 33 years, and so his entire life is before us. And Jesus himself said, from the beginning of time, I was with the Father, part of our triune faith. He gave his all for us. Take and eat and remember the Lord. If you'll uncover the second sheet of plastic. The juice represents the blood of Christ, the life flow of his life. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. When I was a little boy, it always bothered me that a little lamb would be sacrificed in the stories of the Old Testament. Innocent, perfect little lamb. What did that little lamb do? It is so symbolical of Jesus, perfection. What did he do to deserve punishment and death? He that knew no sin becomes our sin and dies on the old rugged cross. Take and drink and remember the Lord's love for you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In your name we pray. Amen. Always on Communion Sunday, we remind you that there's receptacles at the exit doors when you leave that you can drop your communion cup in. The offering plates are there as well. If you'd like to leave an offering for the church, prayer cards can go in there and they go on our email prayer chain. We have our prayer bears out there to be given. I want to remind you that those are free. Some folks were wondering, and those are free bears. You can take to anyone. The prayer wall is there, and throughout the week, we have different prayer quilts that come in uh, to be given out to folks as well. I'm going to ask at this time that everybody stands, and Miss June and choir will lead us in our closing hymn. If you'll join me on page 437 as we sing This Is My Song, and we'll do first and last verses. This is my song.
What a beautiful service we have had here this day. Amen. It's so great when the Holy Spirit is just in your midst. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us, for not staying on a throne and just looking down as we lift up praise and adoration to you, but coming down with your sweet spirit among us and letting us know that we're not alone, that we are adopted, and that we have a freedom, that you have granted us, as the, the beautiful song had said there, you have granted us an and then, an and then in our lives. We may have been trapped in sin, but and then Jesus came and died on the cross, and it made it able for me to be free from my sins. Let us go and shine this beautiful and wonderful message into the world, the gospel that you came and showed to us, that we share it with others so that others can stand and say that I have an and then, and then Jesus came into my life. As we go from here, Holy Spirit, just rest upon us and be with us. We ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Would you please be seated for our postlude and the recession of a light of Christ as we take it symbolically to the world. Brother Matthew's got quite a festive postlude, so you need to be prepared for that. Brother Dustin and I will be in the narthex to greet you, and we are now moving a little further into the narthex if you'd like to speak with us so that folks can move on out of the sanctuary and not be bogged down right here in the very center. Brother Justin? Or Brother Matt?